Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our speaker this afternoon, Rob B. Fantastic to see some new faces here today. Uh, what we've, we've come together to talk about is uh, we feel there's something wrong at the community level. And as Eric Pickles said when he was a minister for local government and communities, uh, if you've got a problem, it's up to local people to deal with it. Statement that was as factory. So got big government's not going to help, help us out with our local issues, it's got to be us as it affects them. Uh, so uh, there was a documentary on TV we talked about that they talked about uh, corruption within local authorities, uh, money going missing, waste, you know the usual usual nonsense going on. Uh, again, the central government said it's up to the local people to sort it. Uh, I wrote to the local government, lo local communities and government uh, uh, department, and uh, uh, Pickles was in it at the time, two or three years ago, and asked who do you recognise as being the legitimate council for Wigan, the legitimate body for Wigan? And they come back and said, we don't know, you need to ask them. Mm. Now, to me, that is absolutely terrifying. Uh, I did explain uh, an attempt to a few people. This is reminiscent of the Ukrainian tobacco in Ukraine, uh, 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 basically went to war. What happened was the cities had all been taken over by criminal families, criminal gangs, criminal organisations, basically organised crime had taken over the cities and when it came apart that unravelled as well, ended up in a lot of people dying uh, and there's still a lot of unrest today. Uh, we don't want that here and I can tell you now what has already happened, right? They've broken Britain up. Just uh, I won't go into too much detail with this, but it's worthwhile just noting this. They've already broken Britain up. We are no longer a country. Right. This, all that is is a, a ceremonial uh, a situation, same as the county, same as the boroughs, same as the Queen. Right. The powers, the think they're in charge, have now denoted all this has been ceremonial right? and they've replaced it with something else, which I'll briefly touch on. Uh, the zero democracy in there, zero democracy, I never voted on this. Nobody in this room has ever voted on it. In fact, twice in the UK they've gone to referendum uh, to local people to ask for regional government, and twice they've been overwhelmingly told to go themselves, right? Because people see this as a, yeah, another layer of bureaucracy, another layer of jobs worth, another layer of cost, another layer of regulation, stifling business and stifling our lives. We don't need it, there's no need for it. So, what they've done is, by the back door, they've just introduced it anyway. Right? And you see Northwest tonight. You see uh, Northwest that's Northwest that Northwest the next thing yeah. And they've got people trained into thinking regions is now regions, regions, re when did we have regions? Just for three people who don't know us already. The definition of the word region, if you actually look at military manuals, military dictionaries, which is a good place to go, is a, a, an area that can be patrolled by a regiment of soldiers. Hence why in the First World War you had all the different county regiments. Because that was what patrolled that area, right? A, a, a district in the military dictionary is an area that patrolled by a troop of soldiers. You now see regions and districts slightly different to what had been sold, right? Uh, which, and uh, again, another area I won't go into, which tells you we, we are under occupation, we're under rule of occupation at the moment. However, another day. Uh, to the community level, right? My grievances, and I know I speak, I speak for everybody out there who's got an IQ above an amoeba, is corruption, lack of accountability. But if anyone in disagrees with me, feel free to shout out and tell me I'm wrong. Uh, lack of accountability, uh, doffing the cap to foreign powers, where you've got no say on what, what, was, what was getting thrust on you. We're now being dictated to, hence a dictatorship, we're now being dictated to, with no recourse in the law. Certainly nobody in the legal system was to help us. Uh, we've got police now who are no longer a constabulary. Uh, and you ask a policeman who he actually works for anymore. I left the army because I couldn't answer that simple question. Who am I working for now? I couldn't answer that question, so I bought myself out. Who do policemen work for now? Right, Great Manchester Police became a corporation soul in 2013, I think it was. Uh, very quietly under the radar, it's in their accounts. 
they couldn't hide it from their, their annual uh, accounts. Uh, they became a private company in 2013. Truly terrifying. Does anyone in this room actually know who the police work for? What their job is? Surely we should know this as local community. Surely we, sh we should be told this. This should be in our front door. And uh, this is what the police do. This is who they answer to. This is what their duties. This is what their, their, their responsibilities are. We don't know this, right? And people are scared to ask these questions. I don't know why they're scared to ask. Because all we're doing is asking democratically. De local community democratically. We're paying for this. And the council tax. So I think it's very basic we should ask these questions. Uh, the accounts, local authority accounts. Right, I can promise you now, you will not get access to all the accounts. Right, there's all sorts of private investment funds and private reserve funds and loads of money in private investors and equity firms now running councils as well. By the way, you've got equity. Uh, there's a whole raft of stuff happening in the accounts, and again, I won't go into too much depth here. Right, we do need to start looking very, very carefully these accounts, who the partners are of these local authorities now, and please. Who the, who the partners are of them, uh, what financial interest these, these private interest groups have. I'll grab that, mate, thanks. It's wet and warm. Uh, who the answer to? Uh, where the money's been lodged. There's a whole raft of uh, interest and freedom of information requests out there, some of my own as well asking where this public money has been lodged and it's amazing how it quickly disappears into private funds, particularly pension funds, as, a, whole, as a, a form of holding account for that money. And what that does is at that point, the public ability for us to ask questions stops because it goes into a private account either owned by the police, that's terrifying, uh, or the Greater Manchester Pension Fund, which is still another area we need to go into a great deal, which is worth 18.4 billion pounds last time I looked. So you're aware how much money that is, 18.4 billion pounds of our money has been lodged in there, right? Well, a certain amount of that is our money, to be factually correct. And it's, 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 in one year it went from 12 billion to 16 billion or something ridiculous. How do you make 4 billion pounds a year unless there's something very strange happening behind the scenes? And there's also private equity firms climbing all over this. Private equity firms are sharks. You don't, it's like going to a loan shark, right? He is going to absolutely strip you to the bone, right? You're not, you never walk away from a loan shark happy. Not a, not a personal experience of this, but uh, but these private equity firms, they don't do it with the goodness of their heart, trust me, these are the, the, the sharp end of it, yeah? So, we are aware that public assets are being wholesale, either sold or ownership transferred or held in, held in uh, as guarantee against borrowings, because the councils all went, in 2008. Uh, so, for example, where I come from, Ashton and Makerfield, uh, you see all, the, all the, the, the local buildings now have been pretty much taken over by developers. Now, under the, the European uh, framework, development framework, which is a really area we need to be looking at, we need to understand this. If we don't understand it, we don't understand what we're doing. We don't understand what the beast is that we're, we're trying to look into. Uh, we don't think it's not a war, and we, just, we try to find out what's happening so we can correct that at the local level for our local people. It's not national, it's not regional, it's for our local parishes at the parish level. Uh, but at the moment, we, people don't know stuff, they've kept it under radar. The guys that are on the show have kept it. The documents, I promise you, you start reading these documents, and your eyes are just like, oh my god, they make them so dry and dull, and the literature is so onerous to read, right? That's deliberate, they don't want us reading it. So you try to take the X-Factor generation and read some of these documents, their heads will explode. So what we need to do is we need to read these documents, we need to be aware of what's happening, which we are, and simplify it, and then get, let, let people know what's happening out there. Again, part of the, the, the responsibility of a, a parish council or at the local level as a community organisation is to inform the local people what's happening. So the people are making, making a, a, a vote at the time of election are making an informed vote at the moment they're not because they don't know a fraction of what's going on. So what we can do is we assist them at local level and that's, uh, to, we're not telling them who to vote for, that's their business. But we can at least help inform their decision impartially so they then know what, what way to, 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 to cast their vote or if they want to vote at all. Because another option is withdraw your vote as a vote of no confidence. And that's another option we can do at local level.
as the whole area, the whole parish withdraws its vote as a vote of no confidence because we can't open accounts or plan is getting imposed on us. Wigan's just going to get 22,000 new houses built. Sustainable development. There's 22,000 new people getting forced on Wigan with no democratic mandate behind it. Is that, is that sustainable? Does the, the resources, the roads, more traffic, more houses, more kids, more schools, more buildings. Why do you see that sustainable? Uh, so I think they're, they're saying they've got an argument, maybe financially sustainable from their point of view, but certainly uh, ecologically, environmentally, completely unsustainable. And as a community, it's unsustainable. Bringing that number of people in overnight would change the, the face of the, community, the local community. Again, the local people are not getting a say in this. So what I'm proposing is, at parish level, uh, we take over, well not take over, we present ourselves forward as uh, uh, parish councillors, right? Very powerful position. They can't do with parish councillors because it's one of those things they can they use as a front to pretend they've still got some sort of authority behind the scenes that they haven't. They need the parish councils, the, 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 the sovereign parish council, sovereign borough council, the real sovereign en entities who are just shell companies now or shell fronts. They operate behind the scenes, presenting this as the front. It's not the front, but we can 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 uh, uh, utilise these. That's what they're there for. What's the parish council there for? What's the parish council actually there for? It's for the local people to utilise to put their message forward and let their voice be heard at the very very local level. Uh, parish council is also very useful because you speak to small numbers of people who are your neighbours. So they're either you know, working class, lady I come from, working class people who are busting their backside, paying every tax under the sun, uh, who all share the same sort of, uh, I don't know what class, but the same status, if you like. They share the same views, the same concerns, blah, blah. So it'd be different from where I live to somewhere in Buckinghamshire or Hereford or central London. So the parish county, the parish you're responding to the local, the local people who you can identify with, who can identify with you. They can come and knock your door. That literally that that level. Now, what's happened, particularly in I, I, I know about Wigan, uh, some parts of Manchester, Greater Manchester, is uh, if no members come forward to stand as parish councillors, used to be in the past they would just appoint people. Okay, uh, if no people come forward as parish councillors, the parish council is deemed to be dissolved effectively, and the the the. the Functions of the parish council are taken over by the local authority, and in Wigan, last night I think it was ten parish councils in Wigan, and is it ten or twelve parish councils in Wigan? There's only one remaining that's still a parish council. The rest are all now been abrogated by abrogated by the the, the the local authority council, let's call them, uh, who are now undertaking that role. Now the parish council was supposed to be a check and balance against the local council. That's what they were. Right. So, for example, part of the council tax, and the council, the, the council are sitting down there with our, you know, friends, the partners, which we've all got these private partners, and deciding what the council tax is going to be. The council tax bill for next year is going to be right. They need the agreement of the parish council. The parish council can demand open book. Right. Without that, they don't sign it off and they need that precept authority, they need that authority to sign off. Now, I think every community is interested to the penny where that council tax money is going. We've also got a legal obligation under the uh, UN and EU and Britain. Uh, it's, a, it's an act of parliament now and this is primary, primary uh, legislation. Uh, we all have an obligation, for every time we spend money, we have an obligation to make sure that not one, we, we're legally liable, criminally legally liable for us. Uh, if one penny of our money goes to a terrorist organisation or we knowingly give that to an organisation or suspect we haven't done enough research to find it one way or another, that money has been used for bribery, corruption. It's called the, the UK Convention Against Corrupt Practices. Uh, this is primary legislation. Everyone comes under it. So if you bring that in, nothing comes above that. Right? That is primary legislation. So uh, we have an obligation individually and as parishes and as a nation to make sure that every penny we spend goes to organisations which are not involved in terrorism, which are not involved in corruption, there's no bribery, no insider dealing. I can guarantee all the three above are happening. That's why they can't have open accounts in the councils. Uh, now, as a local person who's forced to pay council tax, we've got in my head, 
literally. Uh, I uh, would like to know where every penny that council tax money is going. No, I would like to know, as I, I've argued with judges in the past, I've got a criminal obligation to find out where money's going to. I don't worry about it, don't worry about the council. Right? We need to have full access to these accounts. Right? As parish councils, one of the things we can that we can put forward, and it's, a, it's an instruction, it's not a demand, it's an instruction, we want full accounts all the time. Any member of that local, local uh, community wants to see the accounts, they can go in any time, I want to know what that is. That's when the government I recognise. Any government that hides its money, hides its accounts, and can't can't give me a full breakdown to the audit of, of penny where my council tax is going, is not as far as I'm concerned democratic or trustable yeah. or, or, or trustworthy. Okay, they're hiding something. Now I've, I know what they're hiding. I can't talk in front of the camera, but I know what they're hiding, and it's murky. And if this had, this should be front page headlines. This should be bringing down. People should be in jail for what's going on. And the scale of it is absolutely phenomenal. However, they've got some very ugly, ugly partners working with them. And these people are very vicious, very nasty, and there's a lot of money involved. When there's money involved, it tends to make people even more vicious, more angry. So we don't go for the local authorities. All we want is the local people to be informed and the local people to take control back of the local communities. For example, immigration. Nobody's against immigration. My wife's an immigrant. I'm, I'm an immigrant. Uh, you can't tell with a Wigan accent. <laughs> uh, so nobody's against immigration. Of course nobody's against immigration. There's some, there's some people out there going through shit at the moment. You know, well, none of us are bad people. We like to help out. We're charitable. However, when the council knowingly chucks in a wad of people just overnight, bang, like they did in the Isle of Barra in Scotland, by the way, right? Double the city island population, just overnight, poof. Anyone complains about it, face preservation jail, right? That's, I understand that. What does it changes the face of the local community? It changes the, the infrastructure. It changes the services. Changes the whole. Just changes everything. Schooling, the, the, the doctors, you know, the surgeries. It just changes so much. And this needs a lot more thought than I think's been given to the problem at the moment. If you're going to be bringing people in, this doing gradually and have the services waiting for them, rather than just dogpiling them in and all falling to pieces and pissing a lot of people off as well. At a local parish level, we uh, need to check where their money's, how much this is going to cost. So I can tell you now, if you, you say to people, yeah, there's going to be 22,000 people coming to Wigan, you know, you'll get the, the, the usual brigade saying, yeah, refugees welcome. And other people go, well, you know, not necessarily, we'll tolerate them, but you know, to a certain number and within certain confines, and if we can afford it, and if it's not going to destroy the community, yeah, well, fair enough. And that's, that's, this is the mainstream, this is most people, populist think this way, you know. Nobody wants to ban immigration, however, sensible levels of it, and then control when who's coming into our areas where our daughters and sons and you know partners are, are living. I really like to keep control of who's getting brought into the area. Uh, so what we, what we can do is uh, get the accounts, and if you tell people, yes, if we're bringing 22,000 people to Wigan, and the cost that's going to get attached to your council tax bill is boof. Watch the attitude change. Watch it when you actually put a financial figure, guaranteed financial figure, that's what's going to cost per refugee coming to your area. People's views may harden up just a little bit, you know, and they may be a bit more, again, because this money's getting borrowed. The councils borrow money. I say they're all broke. If they're borrowing money, they're selling themselves to someone, and that someone's not doing it for nothing. So what are they getting out of it? Now, again, with the, 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 the this, your way of city regions. Is anyone not aware of city regions? Okay, right. C city regions, look it up. This is what we've got. This one who runs the, the country. This is why they made the, the Northern Powerhouse, Greater Manchester, Liverpool, Birmingham, Newcastle, London. These are all city regions with their mayor. Mayor, replace the word with president. Because what the, the, the future plan is, these are <coughs> going to be, and these, these are going to be self-contained, basically states. And under, under the Greek system, as you some where they became city states, this is the model they're gradually moving to. It's, it's going to be just wedge, 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 wedge. And they've got the mayor of. Uh, sorry, I just read today, this morning actually, uh, the mayors in America who are following the same systems, this is, this is international, this isn't just us, this is this city region thing, uh, got together this morning and decided to, regarding, uh, I think it was immigration, I can't remember now to basically tell the federal government to go jump. The mayors 
Well, they've said that with Trump as well, haven't they? Who runs a, who runs a country? Who runs a country now? And this is the problem. Who runs the country? Because if, if it's not, in our care case, if it's not central government, because they don't know who runs Wigan, they can't tell me the name of the body that runs Wigan Council. Right? So if they don't run it, who does run it? Now, as I pointed out to a judge two years ago at a council tax hearing, who stopped dead in his tracks, by the way, uh, this is why you don't want a criminal gang takeover, organised crime. Right? Because if an organised crime gang can walk in and take over the running of a council, you imagine Wigan, right? I forget, there's 90,000 inhabitants or whatever it is. And they come in and take over control of planning, they take over control of the finances, they take over control of public assets. How much money is involved in that? I mean, private equity firms are just that far away from criminals, by the way. I mean, they're, they're, they're on the line, right, what they do, yeah? But if these guys are getting that, they're getting that level of control with complete, utter lack of transparency, you think they're going to be nice guys? You know? So, as parish councils, we need to be looking at this from our local community point of view. What, what, uh, so we can inform the local people. This is what's happening. This is who now runs the council. This is what the money goes to. Uh, this is who's making the planning decisions. Uh, parish councils have inf influenced the planning decisions, by the way. Uh, and at points you can forget the law because if, if, if someone comes in and just over, over steps over the parish council and steps over the, 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 the democratic will of the local people, which we can do by local referendums, uh, we can just stop paying the council tax. And you get every every because it, it's a breach of trust. You have, you have very good legal presence of doing that. You can on mass the local parish and just tell them to stop paying the council tax. Mm -hmm. They can't jail all of us. They can't jail you anyway because that's your legal tax. But anyway. uh, but we can tell people, and if you're doing it as a group, I mean, if, if, for example, if someone's coming into, a, into the, the lo your local parish and it's affecting people in a negative way, yeah, you get the people on board with it, you will get, I mean, if, if you get people behind you, the, um, what is it called, the critical mass, mass, critical mass theory. So once you get to a certain number of people, oh, suddenly, look, yeah, I'm joining you, I'm joining you. It's getting that initial number to join you. Because at the moment, the guys who are running the show at the moment, rely upon people being dumb and afraid and sitting at home and scared to look stupid, right? I don't, I don't really care about that stuff, but most people are. So we need to encourage people to get involved in local politics and we can make it fun. Let's make it fun for God's sake. God have made politics so dry and ugly and nasty and boring and have made it so argumentative and horrible. We, are not, we don't sell politics. We're not party political. We bring the local authorities and uh, parish councils avoiding the party political machines. Just avoid it. If people want to vote for the, the, the political allegiances, that's fine. They're morons because this is at local level. Parties have nothing to do at local level. So if we, we, we need to look at issues that affect your local, local <coughs> parish. Uh, go and speak to people. Organise meetings. Get people engaged. Local issues. Uh, you'll get the hurr at the back, you know, waving their swords and shooting freedom, painting their faces blue. That's always a Scottish thing. Um, <laughs> now you'll, you'll, get, you'll get the rabble rousers at the back, but I can tell you now, the majority of the people, the populism element of it is, the vast majority of people there in the middle of the road, they have no extreme views, they have no extreme political views. They just want to hear the voice of common sense and actually have a say in things. They just get involved in where it's nice and pleasant. You can have a laugh, have a joke, and I actually turn the communities around and make them nice and make them a place where you want to work, a place where businesses want to move to to bring the jobs. Mm. You know, the, the, as old, I mean, this is, it depends on, the, it depends on your, your local parish, but we can't do this because people just get pulled away from parish councils and we need to, how do you do this? Uh, we need to get ladies involved. We need to get ladies involved because too many white middle-aged men, feminism, you know, stuff like that. But it's, Men are getting attacked at the moment, big time. We're getting attacked at the moment, yeah, because uh, we've, we, I don't know, anyway, there's, 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 there's a bit of psychology there. So it's out there just selling to the, selling to the women. Like we're, you know, we're, we're, there's no men and women here, it's just we're, we're human beings, we're all part of the community. I don't care what colour you are, what creed you are, what your religion is, I, we don't care. We don't care really what your politics are, as long as you leave them at the door. Uh, and your religion, leave them at the door because we're in here. All we're caring about is the local community and what the local community wants. Uh, so, I mean, that, that, that's, that's on the table. Now, there's various books out there. I'll recommend privately some books on parish
Amazon, there's, there's one called What is the Parish Council? It's a simple, because somebody had asked the question, the guy didn't know it, so he wrote a book. He's a parish councillor for many years, he wrote a book, this is what the parish council does. You can read on that, and it's painting park benches, it's uh, flower displays, it's putting baskets and lampposts, it's, you know, basic, basic kind of level stuff, it's not going to be too onerous. But we need to make this fun, guys. This politics has become too ugly, and it's, it's, it's putting a lot of people off getting involved in it. And that person, wrote, I've, I've pulled off the voting list because I just think politics just n nothing represents what I, what I want. Because I'm middle, I'm, I'm, I'm middle of everything. I haven't got extreme views and anything. But I just feel that like politics is too extreme. Uh, it's, it's tearing this country apart. So, uh, but there's a current, there's a, there's a swell you can feel in the air just now. There's this something big happening and the establishment absolutely shitting themselves. Because this could, could turn very, very... I suspect they do want it to become nasty. I think this is fighting at the very, very most senior levels and they want a fight to take place and bring the emergency powers and controls, but they've already done emergency powers. They can control us by that and uh, avoid a thing called democracy and decency in the Constitution. That's, that's a, different, a different story from the other day. Again, bring it back down to, 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 to the community level. Uh, some we discussed earlier on, there was a community bill of rights. Now, most people, in fact, I'll guarantee I can walk down the street there just now, stop 100 people and ask them anything about the British Bill of Rights, 1689, 1690, and not one of that 100 will be able to tell me. If I was to say 99, one have heard of it, one will have vaguely heard of it somewhere. That's the level we're at, yeah. Uh, what, it, what, what the Bill of Rights enshrined was private pro. What the Magna Carta initially enshrined was private property rights. Now, the local Bill of Rights is some that started in America, and I'd like to, for us to look at bringing this into the UK. Right? They've, they've, apparently, the, the, the Community Environmental Legal Defence Fund, CELDF, over America, has made some uh, positive statements. We come, they, they're willing to help us out. Uh, politically, we have to decide where they are, but. It doesn't affect us, we, we were, not, were not political. Uh, but the Bill of Rights would focus on private property rights. Now, where, why I say that is, right to have your home, the right to have the environment around that home as well. We as a community own our environment. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of environmental issues at the moment out there, they have very great concern. Uh, yeah, residual contamination. I, I, I used to be an environmental engineer. I dealt with contaminated land sites, and trust me, there's a lot of concerns out there which are getting swept under the carpet you don't even know about. So, uh, but as a local community, we can delve into those areas. Uh, there's also private control of your money locally. There's uh, uh, all, all assets are, all public assets are effectively in private trust to us. They're, 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 they're trusted to us. The money we've given away, as far as I'm concerned, local authorities are massive, massive, massive breach of trust. Huge breach of trust, it's criminal level breach of trust. Nobody's calling them out on it because they've kept us under the radar. So we need to get this information. So if they've if committed, the, if they've broken the law and they're committing crime, and, and there is a breach of trust there, we need to get the information so we can proceed with that with, with, with lawyers. <coughs> At the party council level, we can get somewhat access to that level. And quite frankly, if the local authority turn around turn and say one of the sanctions we have available to us, there's other ones. You can have the, the, the bad media, you can have, have taking the mickey out of them, you can, there's a whole raft of things we can do at the certain more fundamental level. However, if they ultimately the council are saying, the local authority are saying, we're not going to give you any disclosure on accounts, we're not going to tell you where this money's going to, we're not going to tell you who our partners are, we're not going to tell you who the trustees in the trust are, blah, 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 I say fine, we'll stop paying council tax tomorrow. I tell you, that's how you get attention, that's how you get their immediate attention. I was approached by, there's a group called Keep Bryn Green, it's over in Ashton, and there's a, the, the, the local authority has done a deal with the local farmers, and they've got a huge swathe of land, and they're about to dump a massive housing estate, supermarket, we don't need the supermarket, it's a big housing estate, and you know this is going to be the spillage from Manchester, because Manchester's absolutely screwed itself over with immigration, so what we're going to do, you know it's going to be a spillage, either, you know, Manchester people fleeing to, to Ashton. That's <laughs> who's going to be to get away from the mess that's in Manchester, or Manchester's going to impose, you know, better people on, on, on Ashton. It's going to fundamentally change the face of Ashton, make it feel. Anyway, and there's also there's the environmental aspect. There's beautiful farmland, there's history there, there's, there's a few uh, archaeological features. 
all going to be flattened, going to be flattened. And as the roads, the roads are going to be screwed up traffic. So the whole, the whole lot of issues there at a local level. And they, they always ask, well, how can we sort this, Rob? I says, well, you know, uh, you go into meetings, yeah, yeah, stop. You fill in the forms out, yeah, yeah. You go to the, the negotiations, yeah, 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 stop. Just tell them you build there, stop paying the council tax. Watch that development come to a grind and halt. And also expose the relationship, I've got to be careful saying for the camera here, the relationship between certain private interests and that development. So the persons who are influencing the council may have, very careful to say here, may have some influence in the, the, the investment and the development itself. So to me that's wrong that whoever's influencing the council to get to to to, to get get planning permission given also has an investment in the development itself. And I know this happens because it did it in Ireland. I worked for a company in Ireland and it happened there and asked this asked the question, but surely they if they're on the planning committee they can't be an investor as well. And I was told to shut up my employment was uh, ceased about four months after that. Okay, big money, big money. Can you imagine how much money is involved? Just with Greater Manchester, ten the ten the ten constituent boroughs of Greater Manchester. Uh, how much money you could make if you're a, if you're a criminal organisation or a private a private equity firm or whatever, yeah. If you could control the planning for roads development, can you imagine sheer? We're talking billions. We're not talking pennies here. Billions. If you can decide we're going to stop putting. Uh, 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 buses down that road, we're going to put buses down that road instead. You've just bought all that land. How I know this? Because it happened to me in Ireland. I know it works. I know how they work, right? So you got, you got a dust of the state there, buses got them down every day, and suddenly you change the routes, or you make the, the journey so cumbersome because of heavy traffic, people decide to go to that industrial estate to do their business. And you've just bought that land and built a brand new industrial estate. This happens, guys, right? This is how much power they have with planning. There's a local parish council, I'd like to know about the planning in the local parish. Uh, what land's held in trust by the local authority and county council and regional, whatever they are, uh, gangs. Uh, so we need to get this information at a local level. What I'm, what I'm proposing <coughs> now is we go out there and present ourselves as parish councillors. We are council, we are parish council is being dissolved, as it dissolved itself effectively. It's not permanent. You can go in there and make application to your local authority to start the local parish council again. You have to go in to see your local authority to ask what the conditions are of restarting the parish council. Watch their faces go white, by the way. Their faces go white. I see in Wigan, the, the local authority has basically got basic decisions for nine out of ten parish councils with no oversight. Uh, can you imagine you start involving interested local people? That's what I call it, interested parties. That's all, that's all we are, uh, who are getting interested in what's happening. Uh, if I was running a, 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 some, some gang, the last thing I'd want is somebody asking too many questions. So we go in and ask them, what can, not can I, they work for us, remember. Uh, what conditions do we need to satisfy to re-kick the parish council into a new place again? You need to do a bit of research into what, what was there before. So basically going to propose the same, same model as there before. You know, nothing new, you're not inventing anything. And then what you do is you go and speak to local people, hold a few local meetings, get the right people on board. No uh, political extremists, no religious extremists, no this extreme stuff. People are trying to sell bullshit. The old people are there. Absolutely, absolutely the right, the right uh, 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 reasons. It's just for the local community uh, and accepting of all the people in the local community, regardless of religion, creed, colour, politics, whatever, uh, and take it forward from there and uh, develop it. Because I can tell you now, it's shining the light, and it's. Uh, uh, I think this is this is, this is the background to what we're doing. Shining the light, at the moment is a very murky process, and these guys are getting terrified. Of the, 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 this getting exposed, really, they're really terrified because if people knew a fraction of what I know about how this, the, 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 not the national system, I'm talking about regional, local system, how they works and where the money's going to, they'd be hanging people from lampposts with pitchforks. You know, I want to buy seals and pitchfork company because I tell you what, the people will be furious when they find out where the money's going to. When I mean, they're sitting there, the bailiffs kicking, you know, well, not kicking doors down, but Bailiffs are harassing single mothers, harassing you know hardworking families for this council tax money, and if Wigan has got uh, one one uh, 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 pri a private reserve fund that we know about. Private is a, a key word there. Special reserve fund of ninety four 
million pounds, and they're kicking down Mr. and Mrs. Smith's, you know, well, kicking the door down, but, and they're harassing and harangling them and frightening them and terrifying them, and they've got a reserve fund of 84 million, and the chief executive's on what is 180,000 pounds plus expenses plus perks. Well, the last chief executive got a 400 grand or some golden parachute payoff to keep a gob shut, by the way. Yeah, it's just the fact that it went bust. Right. But this is stuff we need to find out about. We can't get it. If you go in and do freedom of information requests, everything in this room done them, refused, refused, refused. Right? So we need to get access to this information and one way of doing it through parish councils for the <coughs> right reasons, not to break anything, pull anything down or revolution or smash the system or any of this crap, right? We want to find out what's happening so we can help fix it, inform local people. And the way to fix it isn't by marching and protesting in the street, it's by informing people so when it comes to the next election, they can then make an informed decision. Why has your councillor sat there and done nothing and said nothing when he knows this stuff's going on? So when people get informed decisions, we can just stand back and let the democratic process take its way. We're not, you know, so anyway, blah, 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 blah. There's a number of options on the table there, uh, but the Bill of Rights, the local Bill of Rights is certainly one. I think we were talking about two different working groups here. There's such a huge overlap there. I think it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing, right? What we're pushing for is local level. I would produce very simple Bill of Rights, local Bill of Rights, based upon British Constitutional Bill of Rights, private property rights, blah, blah, blah. All the good stuff that no deal disagree with. Uh, we invest the local authority, or remind them of the investiture as guardians of the future, that they have a role as the council, not to think about tomorrow or next month, but future generations, to maintain the environmental uh, value of the, 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 the parish, of the, the future generations of children. There's going to be jobs there for them. There's going to be public services there for them. There's going to be money in the kitty that's not been all, been all been scammed out of it. So they've got a duty as trustees of a trust, long term, to maintain the value of what we've entrusted with them. At the moment they're not, they're selling it off and fingers in the tills, there's all sorts of crap happening. We can stop that, guys. At parish council level, you've got to go to local councillors as well, that's another thing. But I think initially we go for parish council level feel our way as good, just interested members of the local community uh, and, 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 and drive it forward from there. Uh, Ethan, you want to ask? Stungy this, yeah. Uh, now, what I'd suggest we do, we need to do is, what you need to do is go away to various, because we come from all different community. I hate that word community with a passion. Absolute passion. I'll, I'll use it. And trust me, I'm using it. My, my heart's grinding, right? But, Right, because uh, we've got a local communities department and government. Uh, community is too close to the word commune for me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do us start. When I was a kid, we never had communities. I mean, some people here are the same age as me, 120 years old. Uh, do, do, you, do you guys remember when we called it communities when you were? Neighbourhoods. This is the last. Neighbourhoods, yes. parishes, towns, boroughs, cities, towns. counties. Yeah. When the communities come into play? It's all right. So one of the things I like to do is get people thinking, why are we using this word community? Call me. <coughs> anyway, is it okay? uh, Yeah. What, you, sorry, Rob, what, what's the name of that private fund you just mentioned inside the council? It's Wigan Council. They've got a private, this, this came from one of the councillors, by the way, it was in the paper, 94 million. It's called a private, a private uh, reserve fund. I was going to say, is that something that all councils will have? At least one. Right. There's stuff we can talk off camera, I won't talk all on camera, stuff and I don't want the buggers to know what you know about them. Uh, but yeah, but this is the thing, at the moment it's just a lone voice in the wilderness screaming out to people, you're getting fleeced, you're getting taken to the cleaners, and the guys taking to the cleaners will happily destroy your lives and take everything off you and walk away in four years' time, six years' time, they'll walk away from it. Billions better off, foreign companies, billions better off than leaving the local community asset stripped. Now, the council's got a, the local authority, the councillors have got an obligation, a duty, to stop asset stripping. Would you agree with that? Mm -hmm. Well, if they haven't, it's not written in your local council constitution, which it isn't. We do a local bill of rights, pointing them as guardians of the future and guarding the public assets. And if they start selling off public assets, they have to tell us, the local parish, about it, get agreement. If they do otherwise, and we find it's, it's, it's contrary to the long-term future of the parish, uh, we can reverse that decision. 
and recover it back. If they've already sold off assets or they've already uh, leased out assets, they've already put assets in as guarantees for loans, surety for loans, uh, we can again step in and go, you made that decision contrary to the, 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 the wishes of the local people, contrary to your, your role as a trustee, and therefore we're going to be taking to court. We're going to get the, revision, the decision reversed. Yeah. This is where we need the lawyers on board. This is a good place for lawyers to jump on board. We're not political. We, I say we, it's, it's just a group of interested citizens from different, different that's another word I hate, uh, from different uh, inhabitants, let's please use inhabitants, inhabitants from various, various parishes from the northwest. Uh, we're all outraged at the, 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 the sheer scale of what's happening behind the scenes and the, 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 the absence of information that we're getting. Yeah. We'd like to be more informed. And if any lawyers are out there wanting to, to, to work with us, and again, there's no politics involved here, there's no religion, we're not a party, we're not a group, we're not a trip, you know, nothing there that you need to be afraid of. I work at a local parish level. If you can help us out, we're really, really appreciative, appreciative of it. For a young lawyer starting out, this is a fantastic place to start. To, to, to help us out. Uh, obviously, funds are none. Uh, but I mean, we can work with local businesses. We can we, we can talk about this, you know, if, 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 if payment is required. But for you guys starting your legal your legal uh, career, it's a good thing you put in your CV. It's a very good thing you put in your CV that you helped. You know, blah blah. And you, you've been to court and you've assisted us in one thing or another. Uh, it's all, all for for the right reasons. And I can tell you now, the shit's about to hit the fan in the UK. And uh, people are going to start getting held accountable for being party political. I, th I, I can feel things going very, very badly wrong. And I just like to go in there and try and fix what we can at the local level. Why we can still fix it for the people who are not members, who are not joiners, who are not an organisation, who are not private interests, just your normal Joe, Joe and Josephine public, who's just getting fleeced to the courts and asking a lot of questions, getting no answers. So I've repeated myself enough. Uh, if there's no questions, I'll stop there, yeah. Okay. Yeah, thanks so much. Thanks a lot. Ladies uh, and gentlemen, the BCG is committed to the Bradbury Pound. What I'm going to say does not contradict this. Any trading system I suggest will complement and work with the Bradbury and aims and the aims of the BCG. I've been involved with a lot of research with uh, friends and what we originally discovered is that all the exchange rates of every country of the world are massively distorted. And when we made these um, calculations that we found that we were exchanging with China, this country was exchanging with China on a ratio of 1 to 50, which meant that one, car, one of our cars would go to China and we would get 50 cars back. And what we discovered is that what people call as globalization is not the same as free trade. Globalization is uh, a completely distorted, um, a completely artificial uh, system which is based on these currencies being absolutely out of sync. What should happen, and in fact I heard only recently that China agrees with this, that it agree. Uh, there is a need to measure money. Uh, what we've done is invested uh, a master currency, we call it the MH, it stands for man hour, and what this master currency is, one MH unit is um, average human productivity at the lowest level of, uh, of skills. So that is one hour of work at the average um, average productivity of the lowest level of skill and that is what we call our MH. Now in the 1800s where there was no inflation, no deflation, uh, what was happening that we were working with gold 
there were pounds, but there was also gold. Now this gold acted as a kind of measure, even though gold lost half of its value from 1870 to 1900, but basically it was a measure. Now what we could do is um, use the MH and use it with the Bradbury. So there's no contradiction. We can use the MH we can use this measure, this master currency, actually with the Bradbury. Because, um, uh, as I can see it, and on this document which I've given out today, it actually mentions the Bradbury. Um, the BCG are committed to the Bradbury, but the whole point is, um, currencies can move about and, and be valued in different ways. But if it was aligned to the MH, uh, it would be absolutely defined and absolutely measured. Um, also, uh, in this system, which uh, I've been working with for a long time, um, what we need to do, and it can be done easily, is to increase wages massively. I'm not going to go into it. I've actually sent people documents um, through the internet and so they can see exactly how we would do this uh, and the advantage of this at the moment a lot of people can't buy houses but uh, if they were earning a lot more then uh, mortgages would be come absolutely affordable and people could start buying houses also using this MH measure, we could eliminate inflation completely by using this MH in addition to the Bradbury pound. Also, um, in, in this system, and in, in, in a lot of systems which are advocated and so forth, uh, there would be no interest on borrowing. Um, also, the value of savings would be protected. If, if, if we had a bank in 1969 and you'd invested a pound, it would only be worth 2.4 pence. Whereas, if you'd have invested in our bank, if we'd have had one in 1969 and you withdrew that one pound out, you would receive 24 pounds. So, um, this is protecting the value of your savings. And also, all the money lent will be backed by existing assets. So your assets, your houses, your property and so forth, and also the goods you make in factories and so forth, that would back the currency. It would not be currency created you know, by thin air or whatever means, it would all be backed by actual assets. What we wish to do is create a new trading system. We would use a second currency. And once again, the second currency could be called a local Bradbury. Obviously, the Bradbury would be pound sterling, but we would create a local Bradbury. So people using the second currency will be only able to buy goods in the circle of suppliers. Now, what we value at this very, very moment, the Bradbury, um, not the Bradbury, uh, this MH, we have actually precisely meant um, measured it as about 15 pounds so it'd be like a minimum wage of 15 pounds an hour so um, what would happen uh seven pound 50 of it would be in you would be given uh it in bradbury sterling pounds and you would get uh seven pounds 50 put into a bank account you'll be given book and you'll be able to write out checks and actually spend that money but the whole point is 
with these checks you wouldn't be able to buy Chinese goods or, or foreign goods you would only be able to use it with people in the scheme and most of these people or a lot of these people would be local people you could actually produce or half um, 50 percent of an economy could be produced locally if if you went about it but obviously if you can't buy chinese goods then uh, uh, you can't buy them <laughs> people will receive yeah, 50% in the second currency. Um, by local. So what would happen? Wages would be significantly increased. And obviously, if your wages have been increased, you can spend more. So therefore, you could buy more, more local goods and it would create a lot more work. In other words, you could... Um, double the amount of money in the economy. Now you may think, well, you know, is it all going to be worked? You know, how can you pay uh, 15 pounds an hour? But what would happen is that it would be an enclosed economy. So it would all measure out. And we've got all the books and the information. We've got about 20 books which are all written on how it all would work. We've got one book of 400 pages which it's got all the um, figures and everything completely number crunched. Um, now, in three years' time, 40% of the population will be over, in this country, over 65, which is a hell of a lot of people. Um, and also, an interesting thing, there are pensioners groups in every town you will find that they're all linked up to a national pension organisation. So it's all highly organised um, with pensioners. Um, but if you think about it, old people can be used to train up the young, help start new businesses, inspect work and many, many other jobs. Um, also, because of, of, of the pensions may be inadequate, uh, it gives an opportunity for pensioners to earn a little more money, which I'm sure they would be grateful of. So it is a massive resource, uh, all these old people, in all of the communities, which actually could be used by a scheme like this. And what you've got to remember, um, Brexit is moving on and we actually don't know what's going to happen we we don't know if the eu are going to do with us what they did to greece i mean we don't know but if you've got an alternative system it's some sort of guarantee i mean uh, to what is going on we don't know how all that is going to pan out and what they're going to do to us and i was reading today that land rover they're not going to build a new advanced factory in this country they're going to build it in austria so um, there's no loyalty with a lot of these companies so um, so what are the negatives and there really really are negatives because lots and lots of people have actually tried to start up these alternative currency schemes or whatever your cryptocurrency and so forth and uh, there's been let's and there's been the bristol pound and somebody's trying to create the liverpool pound and so forth but uh, gyro gyro <laughs> uh, there are lots uh, uh, there are you know it's it's very very difficult to do so the first thing it's very hard to get existing businesses on board because obviously they're using sterling they're using cash and and so forth and they're not interested as long as they're getting money and people are paying in sterling and they're surviving that they're not interested in joining any scheme and also what i've found is that even people on benefits can be so comfortable that they're not prepared to take any risks even people on benefit you try and persuade them to come into a scheme and you can't you know they will give you any excuse under the sun 
I've nothing against them, but the whole <laughs> the whole point is um, they they're not interested because they're probably having a great time as it is. Uh, also, that what I've found is that there are a, a very few people with an entrepreneurial background. You know, uh, once upon a time, a hundred years ago, lots of people in my own family and probably everybody's family own their own small businesses or own shops or small companies and so forth. But um, nobody, hardly anybody, is an entrepreneur anymore. The, uh, the other thing is, is that people don't have capital. You know, nobody's got any money when you talk to people. Um, now also, I have sent a lot of people through the internet um, lots and lots of schemes, historical schemes and, and so forth. And I've also sent a scheme, which I'm involved in myself, which is called NITEC. Uh, but to uh, start a scheme like that, you would need 100,000 people to actually join. Now, if you can remember, in about 2000, all the Argentinian banks all closed. And what happened, all these schemes started up. And there were lots of schemes that were really successful. Everybody joined, you know. And also, then, uh, when there was all the trouble in Greece, you know, these schemes multiplied. And also in the 1930s, uh, all sorts of schemes happened in Switzerland and Austria and Germany and so forth. So in times of distress, you know, people don't, you know, think about it. They actually do it. There's no other choice. So the final point is uh, to finish off is that our economy does not work. It's as simple as that. Um, also, that our industries, you know, when I was young, all the time people used to say, we are the workshop of the world. Many of our industries have been decimated. Um, I was talking to a friend who was the only economist working at the trade and industry department um, in Manchester. There were all these people working there, but nobody was qualified and nobody knew anything. He was the only economist. When Gordon Brown and Man, uh, Mandelson, you know, came up north, he used to take them round to these factories. Now, when I said to him, only the other day, I said, uh, these industries had been wiped out, he absolutely took me to task. And he said that, oh, the Northwest is very successful. We're producing tons of goods. Uh, technology, you know, is fantastic. And he, he said, you are absolutely wrong. And he, he's convinced me to a certain point that um, we are doing quite well in the Northwest. In fact, we're the most productive uh, part of the country, you know, completely on manufacturing goods. And there is a tremendous lot going on, which I wasn't even aware of. But he goes around to all these companies and uh, he sort of told me. So, um, anyway, that's that. Um, also, if people are earning the minimum wage, only £7.50 or something like that, what is happening, people are not paying any tax or hardly any tax. They're having all these subsidies. So... This is probably one of the reasons. If they were paid at least £15 an hour, and we, we're talking about the lowest skilled people, what about the higher skilled people who would get more? There would be a hell of a lot of tax revenue, so which would, you know, help communities a lot more. So what's happened is what they've been doing as everybody's probably now aware, there's been a creation of money by our banks. I don't know if anybody watches Max Kaiser, but only last night he said in 2008 in America, what happened? They created 15 trillion uh, dollars worth of money 
uh, you know, just overnight. And he said, I don't think there's going to be a crash there because they can create another $15 trillion uh, worth of money. And he said, you know, the same applies here. They can create, and this is true, I mean, I've read it in all sorts of places, they can create as much as they want. But what's been happening is that um, I went to a conference only a couple of weeks ago and I was told that uh, in all these towns what's happening is that foreigners are buying loads of the property, especially in Blackpool. All the cheap property is being bought you know, by foreigners as well as um, you know, buy to let landlords. So what's happening? And also, because they've been creating this money, but out of thin air, that uh, all the prices of are are inflated, and people, you know, can't afford to get on the property ladder, which is where the community of Bill of Rights could come in. And in fact, what could happen that foreign. Um, uh, people could be stopped investing in your local town. And what would happen? You know, maybe house prices could come crashing down if, you know, all these people were not allowed, people out of town, you know, buying properties and so forth. Yeah. I know it's not fun, but... It's not fun for anyone who's got a large mortgage on a property that's crashing. Well, no, 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 this is true. But all I'm doing is just Sorry, flagging up... Um, you know, what this community bill of rights could do. And the last point I would like to make is, um, according to my friend who worked at the uh, Department of Trade and Industry, unemployment is actually 20%. So all the time at the moment you're being told, uh, oh, you know, there's hardly anybody unemployed and so forth. We need all these people coming into the country to do all the jobs. There is actually 20% unemployed. So we, we are being conned. And also, I am sure, you know, that on, on the TV they were talking about picking strawberries. Well, I see no reason why the local population, and if they were paid properly, I'm sure they would all be out on the fields. Uh, you know, I don't see any problem. So what I'm saying is that um, it's the hardest thing to do, I can assure you. I've been involved with NITE for quite a lot of time. It, it, it's so impossible to actually start these schemes. But if this Brexit is coming along, and if it goes wrong, it may be that everybody floods in uh, to it. So all I'm letting you know, that it, there's not only NITEC, there's, there's dozens and dozens. In fact, if you go on the internet, there are literally tens of thousands of small schemes which are going on in countries all over the world. Some of them are successful. In fact, there is one called WIA uh, Bank in Switzerland, and I've actually sent a paper on it, and it is, uh, they are trading in um, billions. Of, of Swiss francs, there are 90,000 businesses involved and thousands of people. There's also a cooperative um, in northern Spain which has been going since about 1948 and there's about 60,000 workers and they're producing uh, parts for motor cars, they're producing all sorts of things. In other words, there are examples um, exemplars which one could look at and so forth and learn and actually maybe bring people in from these um, you know things which are going on but all I'm doing is actually flagging this up as as a possibility so thank you very much for listening any questions is it a bit like the Bitcoin well I've heard of a crypto yeah, well, a lot of people are, are calling things cryptocurrencies, but what you've got to realise, there is a massive difference. Uh, the whole idea of Bitcoin is that people buy a Bitcoin and they're going to hope it's going to double its value or treble its value and everything like that. In other words, it's people gambling. And what we say, um, you've got commodities and it's governed by demand and supply. So 
Gold can go up, it can come down. But what we say, a currency should be absolutely defined, it should be measured, it should not move about. And that is actually what the Chinese believe and, you know, have, have recently said. These currencies should not be going up and down, you know, like Bitcoin. And, and actually people... Uh, also, that, you know, what... I listen to this program called Max Kaiser, and he offer, he's, he's talking about uh, Bitcoin all the time. But you never hear of anything traded. You don't hear about goods being traded or, or what have you. It's the black market they're trading. Well, well yes. It's but, cut the banks out. It's cut, oh, yes. It's yeah. got any possibility yeah. of um, um, underhandedness, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, um... What can you buy with it, though? I, I don't, I'm not clever. Well... That's the question. Sounds good. I've asked people, and, uh, <laughs> As far as I know, there is... Hot, you know, there's not a lot of training going on. I may be completely wrong. Any more questions? Yeah. Back in the early 1800s, yeah. uh, the British economy crashed, people aren't aware of that. Uh, what happened was, uh, local communities at local level, the local fire brigade, local uh, uh, charities, local uh, 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 investment groups, insurance groups, uh, local authorities, factories, names that were trustworthy locally, start to produce what's called copper rounds. And if you've never heard of these, it's fascinating subject. No, you go online on eBay, you can collect them, I can collect them, these things, they're a couple of pence each, you know, a couple of quid each, you know, and you can see these things. And it's because the value of copper was guaranteed. Mm -hmm. And uh, to, to, to start the authenticity of the copper, so you'd have the, the fire brigade stamp on it, whatever, you know. And people don't talk, I always wonder why people don't talk about that, because the local level, it's, 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 it's just a token, it's not a, mm -hmm. it's not currency, mm -hmm. it's just a token. Mm -hmm. It's just an interesting thing when you're able to look at that, the, the, the mm -hmm. copper rounds, because mm -hmm. they've got intrinsic value, intrinsic value in the value mm -hmm. of the copper. Well, there's actually a person doing that in Yorkshire, and his name is Navid. Uh, it comes to um, New Horizons, and uh, often, and he is—he's got some sort of scheme going. And what they're doing, they've got um, pieces of silver. So, what they're doing is exchanging using this silver and everything like that. The, uh, the thing about silver and gold is that. You know, as I said, they can actually fluctuate in value at the moment. It's manipulated. No, yeah. Manipulated. Yeah. It's yeah. Manipulated. Value. It's always been gold backed. Everything has been gold mm. or silver. Mm. But it has been manipulated. Mm. That's why moment. gold and brown got rid of our gold reserves. You know, yeah. it's manipulated. Yeah. Right. <coughs> right. Anyway, thank you very much for listening to us. Thank you.